old response to antigen processing and presentation. So comparison of BCR and TCR. So B cells and T cells recognize different substances as antigens are in different forms. The B cell uses surface bound immunoglobulins as a receptor and the specificity of that receptor and the same as the immunoglobulin that is able to secrete after activation. B cells recognize the following antigens in soluble forms. Proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, some lipids and small chemicals such as haptins, which was covered in the previous video. In contrast, the overwhelming majority of antigens for T cells are proteins. And these must be fragmented and recognised in association of MHC products expressed in the surface of nucleated cells, not in a soluble form. T cells are grouped functionally according to a class of MHC molecules that associate with the peptide fragments of the protein. Helper T cells recognise only those peptides associated with class 2 MHC molecules, and cytotoxic T cells recognise only those peptides associated with class 1 MHC molecules. So, Antigen processing and presentation are processes that occur within a cell that result in fragmentation, otherwise known as proteolysis of proteins associated with fragments with MHC molecules. And it's special the peptide MHC molecules at the cell surface where they can be recognised by the T cell receptor on a T cell. However, the path leading to the association of protein fragments with MHC molecules differs for class 1 and class 2 MHC. MHC class 1 molecules present degradation products derived from intercellular endogenous proteins in the cytosols. MHC class 2 molecules present fragments derived from extracellular exogenous proteins that are located in the intercellular compartment. All nucleated cells express class 1 MHC. Proteins are fragmented in the cytosol by proteosomes, which are a complex of proteins having proteolytic activity or other proteases. The fragments are then transported across the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum by transporter proteins. The transporter proteins and some components of the proteosome have their genes in the MHC complex. So the production and assembly of the class 1 heavy chain and beta microglobulin occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. Within the endoplasmic reticulum, the MHC class 1 heavy chain beta microglobulin and peptide form a stable complex that is transported to the cell surface. Whereas all nucleated cells express class 1 MHC, only a limited group of cells express class 2 MHC, which includes antigen-presenting cells. The principal antigen-presenting cells are macrophages, dendritic cells, and langohandrin cells, and B cells. And the expression of class 2 MHC molecules is either constitutive or inducible, especially by interferon gamma in the case of macrophages. Exogenous proteins are taken in by endocytosis and are fragmented by proteins in an endosome. The alpha and beta chains of MHC class 2, along with an invariant chain, are synthesized, assembled in the endoplasmic reticulum, and transported through the Golgi and trans Golgi apparatus to reach the endosome, where the invariant chain is digested and the peptide fragments from the exogenous protein are able to associate with the class 2 MHC molecules, which are, fi which are finally transported to the cell surface. Important aspects of antigen processing presentation. So one way of rationalising the development of the two different pathways is that each ultimately stimulates the population of T cells that is most effective to eliminate that type of antigen. Viruses replicate within nucleated cells in the cytosol and produce endogenous antigens that can associate with class 1 MHC. By killing these infected cells, cytolytic T cells help to control the spread of the virus. Bacteria mainly reside and replicate extracellularly by being taken up and fragmented inside cells as exogenous antigens that can associate with the class 2 MHC molecules. Helper TH2 T cells can be activated as if B cells to make antibodies against bacteria, which limits the growth of these organisms. Some bacteria grow intercellularly inside the vesicles of, cell -like, of cells like macrophages. Inflammatory TH1 T cells help to activate macrophages to kill the intercellular bacteria. Fragments of self as well as non-self proteins associated with MHC molecules of both classes are expressed at the cell surface. Which protein fragments bind is a function of the chemical nature of the groove for that specific MHC molecule. In order for a T cell to recognise the spawn to a foreign protein antigen, it must recognise the MHC or the presenting cell as self MHC. This is called self MHC restriction. Helper T cells recognise antigens in context of class 2 self MHC. Cytolytic T cells recognise antigens in context of class 1 self MHC. The process whereby T cells become restricted to recognise the self MHC molecules occurs in the thymus. The three main types of antigen presenting cells include dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. Although other cells that express class 2 MHC molecules, such as thymic epithelial cells, can act as antigen presenting cells in some cases. Dendritic cells are found in the skin and other tissues, ingest antigens by pinocytosis, and transport antigens to the lymph nodes and spleen. In the lymph nodes and spleen, they are found predominantly in the T-cell areas. 
Dendritic cells are the most effective antigen presenting cells and they present antigens to naive T cells. Furthermore, they can present internalized antigens in association with either class 1 or class 2 MHC molecules, known as cross presentation, although the predominant pathway for internalized antigen is class 2 pathway. The second type of antigen presenting cell is the macrophage. These cells ingest antigens by phagocytosis or pinocytosis. Macrophages are not as effective in presenting antigen to naive T cells, but they are very good in activating memory T cells. The third type of antigen presenting cell is a B cell. These cells bind antigen via their surface immune globulin and ingest an antigens by pinocytosis. Like macrophages, these cells are not as effective as dendritic cells in presenting antigen in naive, B T naive T cells. These cells are very effective in presenting antigen in memory T cells, especially when the antigen concentration is low for the surface immunoglobulin and a B cell binds antigens with a high affinity. They chronically activate T cells to produce large quantities of cytokines that can have pathological effects. These antigens must be presented to T cells in association with class 2 MHC molecules, but the antigen does not need to be processed. In the case of a superantigen, the intact protein binds to class 2 MHC molecules and to one or more VA regions of the TCR. The antigen is not bound to the peptide binding groove of the MHC molecule or to the antigen binding site of the TCR. Therefore, any T cell that uses a particular V in its TCR will be activated by superantigen, beta V, sorry, resulting in activation of a large number of T cells. Each superantigen will bind a different number of beta V regions. TC cells are self MHC restricted. In addition, T cells do not normally recognize self antigens. Is the role of the thymus to ensure that only T cells that get to the periphery are self MHC restricted and unable to react to self antigens? Functional T cells in the periphery have to recognize foreign antigens associated with self MHC because antigen presenting or self or target cells present foreign antigen associated with self MHC. However, an individual does not need functional T cells in the periphery that recognizes antigen self or foreign associated with foreign MHC. An individual especially does not want functional T cells in the periphery that can recognize self antigens associated with self MHC, so they lead to damage of healthy normal tissues. The process occurs by first T cells binding with their ability to bind self MHC molecules expressed by cortical thymic epithelial, epithelial cells are retained. This is known as positive selection. Those are not bind under the apoptosis. Therefore, these T cells having a TCR that recognizes self MHC survive. Next, T cells have the ability to bind self MHC molecules associated with self molecules expressed by thymic epithelial cells. Dendritic cells and macrophages are killed. This is known as negative selection. Those that do not bind are retained. As a result of these two steps, T cells having a TCR that recognizes self MHC and foreign antigens survive. Each T cells that survive causes a negative selection of thymus and is released into the body. Negative selection is occurring in the thymus. The immature T cells are also expressing CD4 or CD8 antigens on the surface. Initially, the pre T cell that enters the thymus is CD4, CD8. In the thymus, it becomes CD4 plus CD8 plus, and as positive and negative selection proceeds, a cell becomes either CD4 plus or CD8 plus cell. The commitment to become either CD4 plus or CD8 cell depends on whether which class of MHC molecule the cell encounters. If a CD4 plus CD8 plus cell is presented with a class 1 molecule, it will downregulate CD4 become a CD8 plus cell. If a cell is presented with a class 2 MHC molecule, it will downregulate CD8 and become a CD4 plus cell. However, positive and negative selection in the thymus is not 100% efficient. Not all self antigens can be expressed in the thymus. Therefore, some self reactive T cells can get to the periphery. The additional mechanisms are designed to eliminate self reactive T cells in the periphery. And with regards to B cell selection, since B cells are not MHC restricted, there is no need for positive selection of B cells. However, negative selection, meaning the elimination of self reactive clones of B cells, is required. This occurs during B cell development in the bone marrow. <coughs> However, negative selection of B cells is not critical as for T cells. In most instances, B cells require T cell help in order to become activated. Therefore, if a self-reactive B cell does get to the periphery, it will not be activated due to a lack of T cell help.